Hey everybody, welcome back to Stars of the Diamond. Uh, my name is Rhett, and um, I wanted to do a quick video today on one of my favorite sets. Now, I haven't really talked about it very much in some past videos, but I don't really collect regular Bowman and Topps cards. How I collect them is I collect them autographed. And uh, so that's kind of what we see here. One of my favorite sets to collect autographed actually is the 1951 Bowman set. Now that set is extremely popular with people, mainly because it features the true rookie cards of Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays. Um, I have neither of those two cards in my set that are autographed, but I do have a copy of the Mickey Mantle rookie. Now my copy obviously has some, uh, either tape or um, sun damage, you know, on the two sides, a little bit of loss on the right side there. Decently centered as far as mantles go. These typically are kind of off. Back is clean, however. And uh, so that is sort of my uh, Mickey Mantle rookie filler until I can somehow, someday, find one that is autographed. But any example of a Mickey Mantle rookie is, is a nice Mickey Mantle. But this set, uh, there's 324 cards in the set of 1951 Bowman. And I think last I counted, I have about 210 of the 324 signed. So that's what we kind of have here. And um, so really fun set. If you are new to collecting autographed cards, there's, you know, value can be very, very uh, problematic sometimes on cards like this. Because you can have a card that might not have a lot of value in and of itself, but with an autograph on it, it can become infinitely more valuable. But then there's cards that are valuable in and of themselves that the autograph adds very little to anything to the value. Okay, someone like a like a Bob Feller, for example, is a great player, great card. His autograph, they're out there. There's a lot of them, so that doesn't really add a lot to that particular card which is a good value if you are into that because you can pick up a 1951 Bowman Bob Feller autograph for probably roughly the cost of a 1951 Bob Feller. So um, then you have on the other extreme, you have someone like a Nellie Fox. Now, the this is Nellie Fox's rookie. This is actually a really clean example of that card. And uh, Nellie Fox passed away of cancer in 1975. So his autograph is tougher and his autograph on his rookie card is extremely, extremely hard to find. There's, you know, not too, too many examples of this out there. So this is probably of all the signed cards in my set. This is the, uh, the cream of the crop, but this set, I think I have in my set 15 to 20 hall of famers, and uh, I'm just going to kind of go through them. And sometimes when you're talking about autographs and autographed cards, it's, it tends to get a little bit morbid only because a lot of the value in the cards um, depend on when that particular person passed away. So I will be speaking about when people passed away. I don't mean any disrespect to those people or anything like that, but on a collector standpoint, it's, it's an important thing to point out. So I will be talking about that. I don't want anyone to think that I'm doing that to you know, point out that the fact that they passed or championing the fact that they passed away. Of course, that's sad. But uh, without further ado, we're just going to kind of get into the set. Um, so I have mine kind of in or, uh, somewhat order here, and I don't have them spaced out where I can put in new cards, so they tend to go in the back. So as it sits, um, I do not have the number one card of the set, which is the Whitey Ford rookie autographed. Um, that one, it's an expensive card. And Whitey Ford isn't a particularly tough autograph, so at some point I probably will pick that up. I just haven't seen one for the price I want to pay. Um, so some of the nicer cards here, we've got um, obviously a Yogi Berra, an early Yogi Berra card here. Signed on the front by Yogi, and uh, he's one of my favorite guys in baseball history. Just a colorful character, and uh, again, pretty clean cards for the most part. I don't get super into the high grade cards, to be honest. And uh, here's another Hall of Famer here in our Robin Roberts. 
And as I go from page to page, I'm going to kind of show you the bigger players. And I will also show you some of the rarities within this set. So here's another Hall of Famer in red shown dense. By going through Johnny Pesky, Eddie Stanky, uh, Del Crandall, I believe is still alive and kicking, so he is doing well. Uh, one of my favorite cards in the set is this kind of classic picture of Phil Rizzuto. I'm not signed by him, little wrinkle on the side, but nice card there of the scooter. And uh, so here's one of our first. Uh, fairly uh, rare players and that's uh, Jim Constanti and a nice autograph of him actually a really clean example of that particular card and Jim Constanti I believe he passed away in 1976 making the uh, the window for him to have signed cards very small and that is where a lot of the value in cards like this come from is how long did this particular person have to sign this particular card um, and that determines the value a lot. Um, I have not in the album. I also have a Monty Irvin. They call this his rookie, but, you know, obviously he started playing a little bit before this, but um, signed by him. It's in a PSA holder, so that's a nice card as well. Uh, Duke Snyder. This is another one of my favorite cards in this set. Pretty clean example of that particular card. Doesn't have the greatest registration of the card, a little bit of little bit of blurriness. And uh, next to him is who I was speaking about earlier. Here's a Bob Feller. And uh, that also has a little bit of just kind of registration issues. But uh, Gus Bell, that's Buddy Bell's dad. Uh, George Kell, another Hall of Famer here. This is one of the first cards. I remember this card really well. I like that wood background. remember this card really well because it was one of the first Hall of Famer cards that I ever picked up at a card show back, uh, back when I first began collecting. Got a Johnny Mize, Hall of Famer for the Yankees and previously had played for the Cardinals. Uh, Ray Boone, Bob Boone's dad, Grady Hatton, Ralph Branca. Enos Country Slaughter over here. I think he kind of liked the purple or red ink. You kind of find him sometimes with that. Uh, Lou Boudreaux, Hall of Famer down here as well. Signed cleanly. Now, some people are different with um, the type of pen that they have had people sign with. Um, we all, as collectors, have our own preference as to what type of pen should be used. Me, personally, I'm a fan of fountain pen or ballpoint. I don't care much for Sharpie, okay, especially super thick Sharpie. I do have some sh Sharpie signatures in my collection, but for the most part, if given a choice, I would prefer that ballpoint pen. And uh, it just speaks more to the era that these players played. Um, Sharpies obviously weren't around in the you know 1950s. They weren't being collected like that. So um, I prefer them to have a period autograph. Um, I will pay more for an autograph that appears to be from the, the same time era that the cards are from than one that's later. But that, again, is just me. Some people do not have that preference. Some people get very, very specific. They want only black pen or only blue usually black is kind of the go-to and uh so to each person there's no right way or wrong way to collect autographs obviously we have one down here that's a felt tip pen uh felt tip over here so you have them and uh, i don't necessarily get rid of them but if i some sometimes if i will upgrade later i will sell or trade the earlier copy that's in felt tip if i can get something that's earlier uh, barney mccoskey uh, Willard Marshall, Mickey Vernon is a good one. I've always liked this Earl Torgerson. He's kind of a tougher one. I think he passed away in 1990. So I like that, that card. Kind of going on here, um, Sherman Lawler. 
Um, he's oftentimes pointed out as being a tough autograph just because he did pass away in the 70s, I think 77 uh, or 78. But he was a coach for a long time. So as far as, you know, kind of earlier passing dates, he tends to be actually one of the easier people that passed away at that point. Um, Ali Reynolds is another another popular Yankee down here. And uh, definitely if you are going to, to be purchasing or buying autographs, buy them from a reputable source. Um, you know, obviously if they're PSA DNA or uh, Jimmy Spence authenticated, that bodes well. They, they do still, you know, kind of make some mistakes. So it's not always 100% that they're right. But buy from a reputable source. Don't just buy from any old person. Um, a lot of times, especially if you get into the rarer people and the rarer players, um, it's easy to buy a fake. Or sometimes they don't even know they're fake. Andy Pafko is a good one. Because they are selling um, secretarial signed items. And you can have, you know, even the most advanced autograph collector sometimes finds out that they have within their collection a secretarial. Certain people are more prone to have signed secretarially, having somebody sign for them. Um, Ted Williams used to stamp a lot of his autographs. So sometimes you'll find vintage cards with a stamp Ted Williams autograph. That's usually through the mail stuff. Uh, Willie Mays is somebody that had other people sign for him. Joe DiMaggio had, I think, his sister sign for him quite a bit. So there's a lot of, of that out there. No intent to deceive the person or anything like that. They just didn't really answer their fan mail. Other people did. Um, Preacher Row is another one. I believe this is considered his rookie. I could be wrong on that one, but that's a fun signature there. And uh, Joe Garagiola. This is a pretty cool one. And uh, we're starting now to get a little bit higher in the numbers here. And the 1951 set does have um, a high number series that's that's tougher. So here's the shot heard around the world, Bobby Thompson. Not a hard autograph to find Bobby Thompson. Bill Rigney, however, is a bit of a tougher one. Um, Walker Cooper. Sal Magley is a, is a popular one. Phil Cavaretta. Uh, Ted Klazuski is always a super popular, popular uh, Cincinnati Red. And that's a pretty nice card, actually, there, too. And uh, I believe Klazuski passed away in the late 1980s, so he uh, he's a little bit of a tougher one to find. Fred Stan uh, Sanford, Mike Garcia, Cal Abrams, Del Rice, Wes Westrom. And, uh, I believe in the higher numbers, we get into some of the, the better players, better cards, the tougher autographs. So um, we'll get into that. Hank Bow Wow Arft. Can't beat that name. Sivy Sisti. Vic Wirtz. He's the one that hit that long fly ball that uh, Willie Mays caught. Um, that card obviously has a pretty good crease in it. But Vic Wirtz uh, passed away in the early 1980s, making him a little bit of a tougher one. but And uh, probably one of the rarest ones in my collection, actually, is this card right here. And uh, obviously Hall of Famer and everything, but Casey Stengel is is an expensive one if you're putting the, together the set. Um, obviously famous Yankee manager, um, passed away in 1975, making that a really, really tough one to get. Hank Bauer, um, Al Flip Rosen. Kind of the next page brings us to one of the... Uh, Pretty tough card, actually, and the weirdest card in this entire set. So as you can kind of see, most people in the 1951 set um, are, you know, just colorized photographs of the player. And um, for whatever reason, in 1951, the card of uh, White Sox manager Paul Richards is not a, you know, just colorized image, but it's actually a caricature. And uh, so there's our Paul Richards card. And uh, he signed that. So just one of those bizarro cards from this particular set. So kind of moving on here. Next page has one of, oh, Billy Pierce. 
that's a good one too. That's uh, I believe Billy Pierce's rookie. So uh, Vernon Law, that's a Vern Law rookie, and uh, he's from my neck of the woods here. That's a nice card of him, and he's a uh, born and raised in Idaho. But on this page, this card right here is one of the prizes in uh, in this particular set that I have. And uh, Hall of Famer, Billy Southworth. Um, but Billy Southworth passed away in 1969, making there only a 17-year window where you could get this card signed um, authentically by Billy Southworth. So that that's a tough one to find uh, signed. Um, I believe yeah, there's a couple other guys here that are pretty tough as well. Ed Lopat is a good one. Gene Woodling, that's a Gene Woodling rookie. Uh, Johnny Vandermeer, those unfamiliar with his history, obviously he, he pitched uh, two no-hitters consecutively, which that's pretty insane. Um, Billy Cox is a really, really tough one to find. Billy Cox was, uh, had passed away in 1978. So that is a tough card to find autographed. Uh, Bobby Shantz is, uh, was a great player. Doesn't get this recognition he deserves. And in 1951, there's a lot of managers, a lot of, uh, coaches in this set. And they oftentimes will pose, uh, proved to be some of the tougher cards to find uh, autographed. And uh, Jimmy Dykes is that way. So Jimmy Dykes was the manager for the Philadelphia A's at the time. And uh, so tough, tough card to find. Jimmy Dykes, I believe, passed away in the mid-70s. I want to say 76, but I could be wrong on that. And uh, so that's a tough one to find of him. A lot of these guys, their autographs aren't necessarily tough, but finding them on the card that you want is difficult. All right, Billy Goodman is another tough one. Uh, Pete Reeser is a is a really hard one to find. Uh, he passed away, in, I believe, in 1981. So that's a tough tough one to to find autographed. And uh, Hall of Famer on this page is uh, Leo the Lip DeRocher. And uh, so obviously that's a felt tip pen. There, I would prefer one to be in. Um, you know, another type of pen, but I also really like that card. It's well-centered. It has really nice appeal to it. So I don't mind that particular card in my set. I will take that all day long. Johnny Antonelli, uh, Johnny Berardino. I believe he went into uh, Hollywood after his baseball career was over. And uh, here's, a, here's one of my actual favorite guys in baseball history is Jackie Jensen. Now, Jackie Jensen, he had, first off, he had a cool autograph. He just has a great-looking autograph. And uh, Jackie Jensen, for those that aren't familiar with him, was an All-American football player. Um, actually went played, uh, you know, in, in college for football, college football Hall of Famer, all that. Uh, chose to play baseball instead of football, but had an extreme, extreme fear of flying. And once baseball sort of uh, went uh, throughout the entire United States in the late 1950s, uh, Jackie Jensen was one of those guys that really, really struggled with that and actually retired for a time just because he did not enjoy flying at all. So one of my favorite guys in baseball history. And he, um, he passed away in 1982, making his autograph a pretty tough one to find, especially on his rookie card. So, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, back when I first started collecting autographs, getting somebody like Mickey Mantle to sign his rookie card was considered somewhat sacrilegious, okay? It was frowned upon. People just did not do that because this card obviously is highly prized. The thought process back in the day was, why would I get somebody to, uh, someone like Mickey Mantle to sign a card worth $500 or $1,000 at the time when I can have him sign a card from made by TCMA or Renato Glasso 
and make a worthless card into something that I could treasure. So the number of people that had him sign his rookie card or his 52 tops uh, card or anything like that is pretty small, which is what accounts for sort of the price today. Never really made sense to me back in the day when that was the prevailing thought process. I wish I had listened to my gut more and bought more, but I did not. So I have some. So moving along, uh, Wally Moses, um, he was uh, still playing at that time. I actually thought he was still he was a coach or something, but he was uh, playing all the way back in the 1930s and everything like that. So he was an older man at this point. Uh, Gus Zerniel, um, Frank Overmeyer. This one is over. This one's pretty off center. Uh, obviously miscut here, but uh, Stubby Stubby Overmeyer is a really, really hard card to find. So obviously I will take it in any condition. The autograph's pretty nice actually on that, but the card itself leaves a little bit to be desired in the centering department. So at some point, uh, because I think Overmeyer passed away in the late 70s, um, I'll try to upgrade that card if I can, but I may never find another one. So Al Lopez here, there's another Hall of Famer. Manager for the Indians at the time. We're kind of getting towards the end here. Uh, Dave Philly, Clyde King. And uh, there is a Carl Erskine rookie. And uh, he kind of looks like you don't want to mess with him, to be honest with you. But that's a nice autograph of him. And uh, so these ones, yeah, so these are little, these are higher numbers here. So towards the end of the set. So you got Smokey Burgess, Mel Queen. I know that's a tough one. Um, not my favorite condition on that card, but I haven't been able to find a nicer one. So that's, that's the one I got. And uh, that is it. So now I kind of go into my 1952s here. But 51 has always been one of my favorite sets. This this album is just my signed Bowman card. So I, I focus more on that set. But another one that is really fun to collect autographed and that look just amazing are the 1953 colors. And, uh, and even the black and whites for that matter. The black and white ones look cool just because it's very simple. But those are, those are some fun sets. I may feature those in a future uh, video. But I wanted to kind of cover these particular cards because, again, I collect all Bowman cards, all Topps cards. I do not collect them um, unsigned per se. I have quite a few, but this is how I prefer to collect them. And it's a fairly popular niche in the hobby to do it that way. But anyways, um, I wanted to think, take a moment and just kind of thank everybody for supporting my channel. It's been It's grown quite a bit. We have uh, over 100 uh, followers and subscribers now, and uh, quite a few views when I do upload videos. I just want to thank all of you guys. You guys have been great. I, I love the comments that I get in my videos, so keep them coming. If you have comments, if you want to reach out to me, if you have something that you're, uh, you have questions about, I give no obligation, um, you know, appraisals, things like that. I have no problem doing that. I'm not doing this to make money or anything like that. Obviously, if there's something out there that I want, I will purchase it, but I'm not doing this channel to make money off of the cards or anything like that. I don't sell stuff on my channel. So don't feel obligated. If you do have something, let me know. Um, I will 100% try to help anybody out as I can. I will com respond to comments as well. Thank you so much for spending your time at Stars of the Diamond and looking at my collection with me. And uh, if you guys haven't already, please subscribe, um, like the videos that puts them on more towards the top of, you know, kind of the searches and everything like that. So as always, everybody be awesome and happy collecting.